Hey everyone, Intuitive Astrologer Lisa Salvatore here to talk about the beginning of May and the total lunar eclipse that we have taking place in Scorpio on May 16th or 15th, depending on where you are in the world. So I hope everybody is doing well and taking good care of themselves as best as we can under these intense energies. The word around eclipses is always wild. <laughs> we are well underway into eclipse season and the energy is rocking and rolling. Things are picking up. Things seem to be moving quite quickly. The month of May came barreling in and it's going to continue to do so until it calms down. But we've got a lot going on. We've got a lot to talk about. So let's just get right into it. Today that I'm recording this video, it is May 4th. We've got the sun in a conjunction to Uranus, just almost exact at this moment. If you want to get the weekly energy reports that I put out every single Sunday, you can find them here on my YouTube channel, or you can sign up for my newsletter. I do put these out every Saturday morning, um, Sunday morning, excuse me, and they go out via newsletter, or you can just subscribe here to this YouTube channel and make sure you hit the bell icon so that you will be notified every time I upload these videos. But I do put one out every single Sunday. So you can definitely go back to this past Sundays to get an idea of where we are at this week. But today is May 4th, and as we get towards the weekend and then into next week, the momentum is really building and increasing and picking up. And, you know, things can be derailed or curveballs can be thrown at us. Now, we know already what's going on outside in, in our reality, in our three dimensional reality. We know what's happening out on the world stage. There's a lot going on, okay? It's very unsettling for everybody. And we are all feeling it, okay? Even those that don't publicly talk about what they're feeling or experiencing, we are all feeling it. Our bodies are extremely sensitive and our bodies are feeling it. So it's extremely important to remember while the North Node is in Taurus and the South Node is in Scorpio, which is from January of 2022 until July of 2023, okay? The North Node's in Taurus, the South Node's in Scorpio. There's a big reminder on taking care of the physical body, which is Taurus, okay? That's what we're moving toward. Centering ourselves, remembering all of the Taurian qualities and traits that make that sign, you know, abundant and earthy and rooted, okay? So there's something here about getting back to the basics, getting back to the five senses, getting back out into nature, trusting the body to do its job, but also taking care of the body and aiding it along as we move to a higher ground, as we move to a higher frequency as a collective. Now, what's really important is while we're going through this rewiring process, mind, body, spirit, because we're all feeling it, including and especially the children and the animals, okay? While we're all experiencing this energy, there's a strong letting go process that is occurring. And we cannot ignore that, nor can we avoid it. South nodes in Scorpio. So collectively speaking, we are seeing these themes playing out on the world stage when it comes to power and control and sex and sexual exploitation and financial institutions and issues. We are seeing this playing out daily, okay? There will be more of that. There will be more reveals. Now, it's important to remember that we have to move towards the security that the Taurus North Node offers us, but we must do our part. And so therefore, we must take care of ourselves physically, mind, body, spirit. It's extremely important right now to check in with yourself every step of the way amongst these tumultuous and intense times. And to remember that above all else, everybody is feeling this, okay? Everybody's feeling it. So take really good care of yourselves as we go through this minefield, this emotional and physical minefield that we've all been experiencing. And again, it is eclipse season. The energy is intense, okay? Now on Tuesday, May 10th, Jupiter is going to enter Aries. So Jupiter is going to vacate the sign of Pisces for some months and enter Aries. Now Jupiter is a big, expansive and abundant energy, okay? It's a social planet. Jupiter goes big. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac and is a cardinal fire sign. Aries also goes big and goes bold. So this entrance of Jupiter into Aries is big and buoyant and bold and courageous. And, you know, it's a shift. We are going to feel this shift. We're probably already feeling it in our physical bodies. It's definitely a, a momentum that picks up. We're like stepping on the gas here when Jupiter goes into Aries. We see what's possible. We're ready to move toward our future with optimism and fever. Now, here's the key. Here's the caveat to that. On the same day that Jupiter enters Aries, May 10th, 
Mercury, already well into its shadow, in the sign of Gemini, is about to station retrograde. On the very same day that Jupiter enters Aries, where we're going to jam on that gas pedal, Mercury is going to station retrograde in the sign of Gemini, and we're going to jam on the brakes. Or they will be jammed for us. So there is, as we know, when Mercury is retrograde, delays, sometimes some blockages, sometimes frustrations, can be very irritating, particularly around the Mercury areas, the Gemini areas, communication, travel, technology. So we already know that this is coming, and so this could feel frustrating because we want to move forward, and yet we're being held back in some capacity. Now remember the beauty of retrogrades, especially Mercury retrograde. It is a great time to rewire. It is a great time to reevaluate. It is a great time to revise and then realign when Mercury stations direct, which will be June 3rd. That doesn't mean avoid doing things because we obviously cannot. We must live our lives, right? We can't just stop because Mercury is retrograde. But remember just to take your time and triple track, triple track. <laughs> Mercury triple check everything before pushing it out before pushing forward because you're going to want to push it out push it out push it out quickly with Jupiter and Aries but Mercury and Gemini is going to kind of stop us a little bit again both Aries and Gemini are big energies okay Jupiter is a big energy so there is something to this that feels very positive right now you probably want to look to where Jupiter is transiting in your chart so that you can see which area gets infused with this Jupiterian big Aries, Jupiter and Aries energy. I've linked a video below that talks about all the Jupiter videos I've done over the last couple of months that will give you more insight into this transit if you're interested and also how to pull up your own birth chart will also be linked below in the comments box. Now, right before we get to the big events, the lunar eclipse on May 16th, on May 13th, the North Node in Taurus is going to line up with the Sun in Taurus exact, okay? And this is going to be very enlightening, very illuminating about our path, about our current realities, about where we're headed and where we're going. So this could be a day, not just a day, but a time period, really now all the way through the month of May, where we are going to see some strong indicators of what is coming up for us, and more importantly, what might need to be released and or let go of to get us to that future place we know we want to go, okay? And then we're going to get to this lunar eclipse on May 16th or 15th, depending on where you are in the world. On the East Coast, it's 12.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It falls at 25 degrees and 17 minutes of Scorpio. So if you are a fixed sign, which is Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius, especially Taurus or Scorpio, at the degrees with major points and placements between 22 and 28 degrees of any of the fixed energies, which again are Taurus and Scorpio especially, and also Leo and Aquarius, you are going to be feeling the eclipse energies the strongest, but we all feel the eclipse energies all over the world it doesn't matter we're all going to we're all already feeling it but those signs and placements are going to feel it more strongly okay so this is a lunar eclipse a lunar eclipse can only happen at a full moon so this is the point of the lunar cycle it is the last phase of the lunar cycle and this is where the Sun and the moon are exactly opposite one another in the sky in the case of a lunar eclipse what happens is the earth Sun and the moon all align in space and the Earth is basically between the Sun and the Moon. So during the time period of a lunar eclipse, what actually happens is that the Earth's shadow falls on the full Moon, essentially darkening the Moon's face mid-eclipse. It's the best way I can describe it. And sometimes it even turns it like a coppery reddish hue, and that's why it's often referred to as the blood Moon, because sometimes that does happen. So this is sort of like the technical explanation of what happens around a lunar eclipse. But spiritually speaking, it's much bigger than that. Okay, so let's unpack this before I pull up the chart. Full moons in and of themselves are a crescendo of energy. It's a culmination. It's the point of the lunar cycle where we go dark so that something can be illuminated and highlighted and revealed to us. Mind, body, spirit, sometimes it's very subtle, sometimes it's extremely profound and impactful. It's different depending on your own personal chart and energy and also the cycle that's the other planetary happenings that are going on around this lunation. And so this full moon, because it's an eclipse 
And because it's such a big energy and because even more importantly, it's in the sign of Scorpio. This is this is big, okay? And I'm I'm not going to say bad, but there's a lot to it. Now let's remember, Scorpio is a sign that struggles. The moon struggles when it falls in the sign of Scorpio. It's considered to be in its fall when it's in the sign of Scorpio, meaning it, it struggles. It doesn't love to be there to begin with, okay? Step one. Step two, it's a lunar eclipse, which is basically a full moon on steroids. That's step two. Step three, it's a south node eclipse. The south node in Scorpio, remember, this is all about letting go. This is an energy of decrease. This is an energy also of elimination because Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, and Pluto is all about deconstruction, reconstruction after the deconstruction, deconstruction. but it's about elimination. It's about coming to terms with things that are psychologically holding us down, holding us back. It's also secrets being revealed to us, from us, whichever way that goes. And a big theme around this time is snakes shedding their skin. Now, Pluto represents Scorpio. Pluto rules over Scorpio. And Scorpio is represented by the scorpion. And the scorpion sheds its shell time and time and time again, okay? It dies to be reborn time and time and time again. And metaphorically speaking, this is the trait of the sign of Scorpio. The south node is consistently asking us to let go, let go, let go so that we can grow. But that's not always an easy process. And quite frankly, it's often downright painful. And when it comes to the psychological underpinnings, the things that we've been carrying with us, the baggage, the karmic baggage, it's even more difficult to let that go, especially when it comes in the form of relationships, which is a huge theme around eclipse energy to begin with, entrances and exits. People literally tend to check out, okay? Not to scare you, not to be doom and gloom or talk about, or to, you know, predict death or anything like that. But around eclipses, you'll notice, you will hear a lot more people checking out, okay? Permanently. That's another theme and word for Scorpio and Pluto, permanence, okay? So I'm not saying that that will happen, but that could also be very metaphorical, like things have to die to be reborn. Habit, old habits die hard, okay? That's an anthem for the Scorpio South Node. And a lot of it can most certainly be psychological, some of it can be quite literal, and a lot of it can be metaphorical. Only you will know dependent upon your own current reality. But the bottom line is with the concept of the snakes shedding their skin, and more importantly, snakes showing their colors, be mindful of snakes in the grass because this eclipse energy is absolutely very revealing. And you will find that you don't even have to do true detective work like Scorpio. The sign of Scorpio is like the detective of the zodiac, and so is Taurus. And these are the nodes that we're in right now, Taurus and Scorpio. But without even having to go too deep into some detective work, Things and people are revealing themselves. They are revealing their truths. Again, we see it playing out on the world stage, but taking this to the personal level in your own reality, ask yourself, what has been revealed to you in the form of other people in your life or other situations that you might've been wondering about and then all of a sudden, you get a, you get a true glimpse of someone's real character that you were not expecting for better or worse and it helps you to release to let go and then to move towards something different something better you know this is a time where any relationships in your reality where you are today if they are not conducive to your growth to your soul growth and you will know because you will feel it everybody's here it's that much more difficult to stay there when you're not in alignment. And so the Scorpio South Node is gonna to continue to press the button and also shine the flashlight onto those corners where you need to see what really has to go, okay, in your reality. Now, it might be a psychological habit. It might be a specific relationship. It might be a specific job. You know, for everyone, again, it's going to be different, but the theme of power struggles and breakdowns and breakups and breakthroughs is very strong right now. And here's the saying, let go or be dragged. Both Taurus and Scorpio are fixed energies. They don't really love to change things that are status quo, but that's exactly the point right now. And it's not a coincidence because, you know, the fixed energies are getting pushed on to change. And that's it. And it's like you, again, let go or be dragged. And that's what eclipses serve to do. If we hang on too tightly, 
the winds of change, the winds of fate, I should say, will come in and sweep away what isn't working, and it's usually for the greater good. In fact, it's almost always for the greater good. We just don't necessarily see that in the moment. And let us not forget that Uranus is involved with this eclipse. The sun is conjunct Uranus. You know, Uranus is in Taurus. North node's in Taurus. There's a lot of Uranian energy here. And Uranus is always that wild card that's, you know, it gives us the disruption. It clears the path for us whether we want it to or not. And again, the objective is to push us forward, not to hold us back. So I think it's important to remember that we are definitely under intense energies right now and things can change in a moment's notice. And it's really important that you check in with yourself and you check in with your own vibes, your own vibration and see where you are at and what are you, you know, vibing on? What are you thinking about? Where are you putting your energy? Who are you giving your energy to? I keep saying this over and over again and I know I sound like a broken record, but it's so important under this energy to do that to stay as grounded and as centered as you possibly can so that when and if things do come out of nowhere, you're better equipped to handle it and not spiral. Now, again, this is Taurus and Scorpio, Taurus the North Node. It's reminding us to get outside, get into nature, get back to basics, grow your own food, plant a garden, you know, smell the flowers, these little things that we forget to do on the regular that really do help us to, ch to check back in and go back inward and less out there and less up here because this is what's going on right now. You know, there's a lot of craziness, okay? There's a lot of craziness out there. And it, it's almost impossible to not have it infiltrate in here. But that's why it is so super important to cultivate practices that help you to get in touch with yourself, okay? That help you to get grounded and centered. There is such a strong intensity of feeling right now, okay? And some are really not comfortable with it. So I say the more uncomfortable you are with any emotion that comes up for you, the longer you should sit in that and sit with it and get out into nature and really ponder the feeling, even if it makes you uncomfortable. In fact, again, the more uncomfortable it makes you, the more you need to lean into it. Okay, so yeah, this is a mega full moon, very powerful energy. Let me pull up the chart real quick. Okay, so here's our chart for the total lunar eclipse that takes place May 16th, 12:14 a.m. Eastern Time. So here we see the sun at 25 degrees and 17 minutes of Taurus, opposite, exactly opposite the lunar eclipse full moon in Scorpio at 25 degrees and 17 minutes. We see here big Jupiter at zero degrees of Aries, just having entered the sign of Aries. And Jupiter is supporting or being supported by Mercury over here at three degrees of Gemini. So this is all about, you know, big picture thinking. We are recognizing where we want to go and what we want to do, but we can definitely feel a little bit, not blocked necessarily, but almost like we're just being held back. So there's definitely this feeling of two steps forward and two steps back under this energy, but it is still optimistic because we're seeing what we where we want to go we're having that vision and jupiter is also over here in a um, semi square to uranus uranus is definitely supporting jupiter's big picture thinking and maybe even giving jupiter a different way of doing it a different revelation a different aha moment okay go this way if you can't go that way a different way of thinking and aries can be stubborn but i think uranus will help this along now, Pluto is also supporting this eclipse because let's remember, Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. Pluto is the modern day ruler of Scorpio. So Pluto technically is ruling this eclipse, okay? Now, Pluto is in a trine to the sun in Taurus. Pluto in Capricorn at 28 degrees, 32 minutes is in a, and also retrograde, is in a trine aspect to the sun. So that's supportive. And again, Pluto retrograde is giving us that opportunity to say, okay, you know, what keeps coming up for me? What's, what's compulsively or obsessively grating on me? That's something that I need to look at. That's something where I need to shine the flashlight. And again, the more you try to ignore it, the more it's going to keep coming up for you. So it's wise to take this time to definitely reflect. Now, the other thing that's nice here is that Mars over here at 23 degrees of Pisces is in a nice conjunction with Neptune over here at 24 degrees of Pisces. And this is actually trining the moon and sextiling the sun. So this Mars-Neptune conjunction is also supporting this lunar eclipse. And what's really nice about that is that Mars is the 
modern, I'm sorry, Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio. So Pluto is the modern day ruler of Scorpio. Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio. So both of Scorpio's rulers are in nice aspects to the sun, okay, and also the moon. So that is very helpful. I'm not gonna say that that makes it an amazing energy, but it certainly can sweeten the deal. It can sweeten the pot a little bit. And the intuitive awareness is extremely heightened right now. And that's why I mentioned earlier about snakes revealing themselves, snakes in the grass. Pay very close attention, not to, bre not to bring it to something negative, but it is the truth, it is the reality that things are going to be coming up. You're going to be seeing things. It may be shocking revelations that hit the world stage. More than likely there will be those. But, you know, for your own personal reality, there could be some things. You know, again, there might not be, but there certainly can be. And this energy is promoting that. And so you will likely get the insights and the answers you are seeking because the intuitive energy is so strong around full moons to begin with, plus the planetary activity that we've got going on, and plus the fact that it's a lunar eclipse. So now again, both Scorpio and Taurus deal with money. They deal with financial institutions. They deal with the economy. So you know, having this lunar eclipse opposite that sun Uranus conjunction, we very well may hear some, you know, revelation, some things, some information, some news about these areas over these next coming weeks. And we've already been hearing some things, but there more than likely will be even more to it. Now, Saturn has been in a long-standing T-square to the nodal axis, okay? So again, there's this energy of, well, can we really do that? I may have to hold you here a little longer. You're being restricted. You can't quite go there yet. All this other energy is saying, go, go, go. And Saturn swearing the nodal axis is saying, no, 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 let me show you why you can't go in that direction. So again, further emphasizing under eclipse energy, it's really important to take breaks. It's really important to take care of the physical body. It's really important to rest and to reflect, okay? And to not overload your schedule and to not overburden yourself with chores that you need not be doing because there's already enough going on and the physical body holds all of this energy and it needs to get it out and more importantly it needs to recuperate so don't burn out okay you heard it here first now Chiron's over here in a conjunction to Venus so again this speaks to relationships this speaks to where we may have been or feel we may have been wounded and or victim victimized and you know, wanting to set the record straight, which either means growing together or growing apart, okay, and releasing for your own good, for your own growth, for your own soul's evolution. And again, I can't help but bring up that Saturn over here at 24 Aquarius is conjunct asteroid Vesta at 27 Aquarius. And to me, this represents that feeling of going home, okay? So we will likely hear more and more people checking out, going home, in other words, transitioning, Pluto, transitioning, departing, going to the other side. Now, remember, Jupiter is a big energy, and it's at zero degrees right now around this eclipse. Jupiter is also an energy of going home, okay? So I find Jupiter to be very, very impactful when it comes to transition because think about it. When people leave this Earth plane, there's a freedom, there's a sense of liberation that comes with that. We don't know that right now here, but when we depart, we will know that, right? So there's this big energy of that, of, of the exit point, okay? For, for, you know, people, for animals, for, you know, and I've, I know the animal kingdom, there's been a lot of passings, there's been a lot of entrance, a lot of exits going on within the animal kingdom. I, I know this for fact because of the amount of people that I work with and even people that I'm connected to in my life this is a thing, okay? And also, so is the whole, you know, people that have been hanging on by a thread, you know, they may just check out, you know, this is Saturn conjunct Vesta with Jupiter at zero Aries. To me, again, that's a big energy of going home, but look at it as this is for the, this is better. This is for the betterment of that soul, okay? So there's nothing too negative about that, even though it may sound that way. You know, the Scorpio axis, the Scorpio sign of Scorpio reminds us that death in all forms is an inevitability of life and that the thing about it that makes it so scary is because it's permanent and so when you think about it from the perspective of transition and elimination and permanence and also inevitability it makes it a little bit less scary but it still feels scary and it is an eclipse and you know i'm again i'm not saying anything doom and gloom i'm not saying that these things are going to happen i'm just saying that it's more common around eclipse energy for this type of um 
for these type of circumstances to occur. Again, entrances and exits of all kinds are very common around eclipse energy, so pay very close attention to who and what comes into your life and also who and what exits your reality. And really taking the time to go inward and reflect and rest and look at whatever is going on for you and without making decisions too hastily to really sit there and, and make sure that where you're going is in alignment with who you truly are and that what you're doing is what you really want to be doing and you're not just doing it to go along with something or to go along with somebody you know you may be sick of it you may be ready for just you know boom it's uranus uranus like liberates us uranus wants to liberate us and wants to free us so you may just find that after some time you know something that you've been sitting on for years even all of a sudden you just boom you make this big change and that's uranus so you know I'm going to tell you to go with the flow of that, but it's really hard to go with the flow and do this energy, but whatever does come up for you, go with the flow of that, lean into it and see where it's trying to take you and what it's trying to show you. Okay, so there's another big thing around this eclipse that I did not pull up in the chart, but I am going to mention it. So there's a fixed star called Algol, and Algol is known as the demon star, okay? There's a whole mythology behind it with Medusa's head, and um, basically there's negative connotations to the fixed star, Algol. It's a blinking star in the sky. The ancients referred to it as, as the demon star for that reason. And at the time of this eclipse, the sun is conjunct Algol. So again, you know, I'm not saying that this is a demonic energy. I'm just saying this further emphasizes that theme of the snakes aspect, okay? The snakes coming out of the grass, you seeing things for how they really are and like, oh, okay, I got that now, I got you. I, I had that feeling and it's been confirmed. Now you, you don't have to say it, you simply just alter where you're at according to that. And again, be, be very mindful, be very careful, take really good care of your body, okay? And pay attention to, most importantly, pay attention to the emotional body. Pay attention to everything that you're feeling because it's not coming up for no reason, especially under this energy. Let's get a tarot card for, for this eclipse. The Three of Wands. This card tells us to take a breather. This is a card about putting a little bit of healthy distance into situations, into relationships. It's about doing what you can do and then stepping back. So it's like you've thrown a line out there and now you're stepping back. You maybe are keeping some distance between a situation, some healthy distance, waiting for the right time to push forward, which is actually what we've been talking about throughout this whole reading essentially, is that we want to move ahead and things are being put in motion, but due to the energy that we are under, we could feel like we're being held back between Saturn squaring off with the nodal axis, Mercury stationing retrograde. There's a lot of, you know, energy of, wait, hold on. Look, June and July are gonna have lighter astrology. They're more smooth. So honestly, for the month of May, I would tell you just kind of like, just chill if you can, you know? Don't push things beyond a workable measure. You shouldn't especially when they feel hard because that's a sign, okay? That is the divine telling you, stop, don't do it. It's not the right time. When things flow effortlessly, that means, that's spirit's way of working through you and saying to you, go, good, you're good. But when things keep hitting a brick wall, uh-uh, that's like spirit's telling you, no, no, -uh, stop. And that's pretty much what the month of May is about. There's gonna be movement. I'm not saying you're not gonna be moving or doing things. You will know the difference because of the flow of it or the blockage. Okay, take really good care of yourselves, and I will be back soon with another video for the rest of May and our new moon at the end of May as Mercury stations direct and the energy does tend to lighten up a bit. Take really good care of yourselves under these intense energies.